But do you really believe that when people talk about the threat to democracy that Trump poses, do you really think that that is is it an equal yeah, evil I mean, to I, Biden? I, I mean, listen, I can make the argument that President Biden is a much worse threat to democracy. And the reason for that is President Biden is the first candidate in history, the first president in history that has used the federal agencies to censor political speech, so to censor his opponent. I, you know, I can say that because I just won a case in the Federal Court of Appeals and now before the Supreme Court that shows that he started censoring not just me. For 37 hours after he took the oath of office, he was censoring me. No president in the country has ever done that. The greatest threat in democracy is not somebody who questions election returns, but a president of the United States who used the power of his office to force the social media companies, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, to open a portal and give access to that portal to the FBI, to the CIA, to the IRS, to CISA, to NIH, to censor his political critics. President Biden, for the first first president in history, to use the secret, his power over the Secret Service, to deny Secret Service protection to one of his political opponents for political reasons. He's weaponizing the federal agencies, those are really critical threats Donald to democracy. Trump, of course. What's going on, everyone? Talks to Kenny here today. As you saw from the intro, Robert F. Kennedy has just claimed that Biden is a bigger threat to democracy. And I tend to agree with him on this point. The reason why I believe that uh, Biden, the Democrats, are the biggest threat to democracy is that they're hypocrites when they come to pushing democracy. I always make this claim in my channel that whenever Democrats are using threat to democracy, what they really mean is threat to our power. Threat to our influence, threat to our control, threat to our agenda. That's what they that's what it means when they say threat to our democracy. Because if you look at democracy, right, you have a polls where they show that both Biden and Trump are unpopular. Most people do not want them, they don't want to rematch with Donald Trump versus Joe Biden. Republicans party heard this and said, oh, okay, we'll hold a primary. We had, I don't know how many candidates. We have Vivek, Nikki uh Haley. Uh, we had uh, Chris Christie. We had all these people run on the Republican side to challenge Trump. And they were actually given a platform to actually advertise and articulate themselves to the conservative base to get uh, nominated for the Republican Party. What did the Democrats do? Oh, yeah, nothing. They said, no, DNC, we're right behind Biden. We, we don't want to hold any uh, uh, primaries. So all these candidates were, were stuck with no platform. They had to try to go uh, other routes. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. tried to run as a Democrat. He had 22% support, which is a sizable support, at least for a conversation. Hey, okay, we should entertain a primary. Did the DNC listen to the Democratic voters? Hell no. And now they're mad that he's playing spoiler. This is why I made the prediction. I made a prediction a long time ago. I have videos out there. Uh, I have a live stream out there. Robert, where I predicted, hey, it makes no sense for Robert F. Kennedy to continue running if he's not giving a platform. The best choice he'll have is to go independent. And voila, he, he went independent. Because now he's no, one, uh, no longer under the thumb of the Democratic Party. And this is the funny part about the party that claims for democracy. Is that they're really using democracy as a, 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 as a doublespeak. Right? Because these people lack morality. They, they, I, I, I could tell you, Democrats is the most Machiavellian party I've ever seen in my life. They can change their morals, principles, and their stances based on whatever seems convenient or politically expedient for them. They're a, part, they're a party of racism. Then they realize, oh, we can use this unfortunate event to, for our party and spin it as a win to have these N-words voting Democrat for 200 years. Allegedly, this is what Le and Lyndon B. Johnson said, but it's following the we're, black people are following the, the script. So this is the kind of party the Democratic Party is. So this is why I, I it is, to me, it's not, be, it's not beyond me to consider them the biggest threat to democracy. Here in Florida, they didn't hold no, no primaries for uh, the Democrats, even though they had uh, numerous people running against them. They didn't hold no primaries here. They just put Joe Biden's name only, and that's it. Look it up. Florida Democrats didn't hold any primaries. They essentially just put Biden on the ballot, and that's it, because he's the only one that qualified. But that, that's the part of the democracy. The part of the uh, democracy just try to prevent Trump from going on a ballot for a crime that he did not commit. Inciting an insurrection when, if you look at the label insurrection, January 6th does not fit that. January 6th looks more like a riot than it did an insurrection. But they try to charge him with that. They try to rationalize the decision of 
with taking out their political opponent from the ballot to pretend that they're doing something just and moral when they could have been done in 2021, 2022, 2023. But no, they wait until 2024 to do all this prosecution, which makes it overtly political. This is why Democrats and Biden in extinction is a threat to democracy. But I digress. I, I think I, I made my case. I think I made my point uh, solidly enough. Look at this next clip where RFK doubles down on his claims that Biden is the biggest threat to democracy, and me and you will watch it together. Let's take a look. Well, Robert, uh, one of the big issues for Democrats they've talked about is the threat to democracy. You raised some eyebrows yesterday when you were comparing the former president to the current president. You said in an interview that you believe that Joe Biden is a bigger threat to democracy than Donald Trump. This is what you have to say. Watch. When people talk about the threat to democracy that Trump poses, do you really think that that is, is it an equal yeah, evil I mean, to Biden? I, I mean, listen, I can make the argument that President Biden is a much worse threat to democracy. Why did you say that? And, and by the way, I said I can make that argument, and I think it's an argument that we ought to be having. President, president Biden has done something that no other president in history has done, which is to order uh, media, particularly the social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Google, to censor his political opponents. And, I, you know, I can say this because I just won a lawsuit in the Federal Court of Appeals and now before the Supreme Court. Um, because he began censoring me 37 hours after he took the oath of office, swearing to defend the Constitution. White House officials were on uh, email with Facebook saying to them, you got to take down his post. Facebook actually pushed back and saying there, there's no misinformation here. This is actually what he's saying is accurate. And they had to make up a new term called malinformation, which is information that is accurate, but nonetheless inconvenient to, you know, politically inconvenient. So there's been no, the First Amendment was put in the Constitution. Madison Hamilton had it said, we put it free expression, the guarantee, the First Amendment, because all the other rights are dependent on it. If you have a president who can censor his political opponents. Right. He is the license for any kind of atrocity. That is a genuine threat to our democracy. You've seen that. you heard that. Uh, Glenn Grunewald uh, had a very uh, fine, t uh, t I'd say, t ex post about Edward Snowden and how uh, RFK wants to pardon Edward Snowden. And as you, if you don't know who Edward Snowden is, he was a journalist that exposed this, uh, the unconstitutional and illegal U.S. government spying and sacrificing his liberty to protect American privacy rights. If they did it before, there's a high likely chance they'll do it again, right? So when RFK in the clip you just saw exposed that fact that the FBI had access to Twitter posts, YouTube posts, social media companies, and was able to censor, deboost a uh, commentary or political opposition or ideological opposition to their agenda, that's 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 that's, that's to me that affects our first first amendment rights because these are protected rights like no businesses no business policy should be worth more than your rights like like imagine a company saying oh you work at this company we can treat you like any way we want no you can't you have to follow the law this is why i don't believe in um de-boosting as a as a as a policy because i'm like yo you're affecting my rights here it's like saying hey if you're in this company we can pay you a slave wage because you signed it away. You chose to be at this company. No, no one would accept that. They say, no, no, state law is above business law. You can't just make a policy in your business. And just because it's in your business, that means you can defy what's going on outside. No, that it doesn't work that way. So I don't understand this theory of them saying, oh, it's a private company. They could do whatever they want. Oh, okay. In that case, they can pay you a slave wage and the, the minimum wage laws have no bearing then. Like, like it make, make it make sense. Like, this is the kind of double speak that I, I, I'm starting to get annoyed with the left on, right? And then when they do trust the science, which is like the similar to their double speak with threat to democracy, is all the experts agree. This is my example of censorship. This is why I am so strong. Like, I strongly defend censorship. We, well, not all of us agree, canceled. All the experts agree. This is the true purpose of censor censorship. Climate change is experiencing this. This client, this, this experts on the climate change matter that has shown, hey, uh, we kind of exaggerating the effects of climate change. Canceled. All the experts agree. You have people on the WHO institution, which is the World Health Organization, 
who have no medical qualifications. All of them are transgender activists saying that how transgender and advocating for transgender health, how uh, transgenders can breastfeed their children. I believe the CDC made that claim. A trans woman can breastfeed, even though that's the most unhealthiest thing you can do because they have to inject a lot of hormones to allow them to breastfeed the, uh, their their kid. So this is the insanity we're going, right? Like it's it's so funny that when the Democrats say, "Oh, we're not we're not doing uh, censorship. We're just doing accountability culture. Accountable for what?" Press secretary blames the rights right for trans day visibility controversial call. It call it, it calls it intentionally misinformation. This is another word, misinformation. This is how they try to label speech, right? Because this reminds me of the progressive era. Like during the progressive era, there was this idea, this idea that genetic determinism was a thing that based on your race you were doomed to have low iq and do and because of that they thought hey we shouldn't have these people populating because it'll affect the nation's iq and there was a lot of experts that called this out saying hey no there could be something wrong with the test how are we testing these people there could be other factors for why these people score so low on their iq hey what what makes sense that over time these people generally get smarter and smarter if iq is stagnant if iq is determined on your genetics just like genetically i'm a male and i'll always be a male intelligence does not operate like that intelligence is seen to be malleable if i move one kid from one location to another location he'll have two different iqs that points to the fact that it's not merely genetic right and genetic determinism, what they do, shout them down, uh, uh, attack contrarian views, because this was common consensus. This is why free speech must be the number one pillar in the United States of America, because it allows it prevents us from falling into dogmatic thinking. And that's what's been going on with the climate change issue, especially the climate change issue. If you speak out against the climate change, climate change issue, people call you brain dead. Oh, you don't trust science. I'll just show you why. I have numerous examples about uh, energy. Clean energy means no energy. Clean energy means less energy. That's the reality because any energy commit has some type of negative cost associated with it. But for some reason, oh, it's a fad. Oh, we want solar, we want wind. But solar and wind are so unreliable that it, it's practically unusable. Only in small specific cases, only to power your house can you realistically use solar energy. And even then, you still need oil and gas to be the backup just in case it goes down. That's how unreliable wind and solar is. But they keep trying to push it as the replacement. Only nuclear energy has a, gr a better chance of replacing gas, but they, the climate changes don't like that one either. So it's not like they don't, they don't like the science. They just like science that confirms their, their beliefs, their ideology, their worldview. And this is what's been taken over in academia. I showed you a video yesterday with Roland Fryer. Almost lost his career because he, he exposed a study that debunked the claim that beliefs are racially biased. Right, that really, like police or has some type of racial bias against black people. He exposed it, and for that he almost got he he had to walk off. He had to walk with a police guard to defend him, just in case something happens to him because he got threats. He rocked the boat too much, and this is the reality of academia. This is the reality of college. That's why many conservatives and like, and especially me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a college dropout. That's why I don't respect college degrees. College degrees give uh, to me dumb people. Licensed to act like they're experts and smart. All you know how to do is regurgitate information. All you know how to do is memorize information, and you're thinking you're smart. I I, I don't I don't I don't subscribe to that kind of logic. College degree has become a form of credentialism, and based on their credentials, oh, I'm allowed to have an opinion. You're not allowed to have an opinion. That's how the left use college. The college system, which is twelve to one, uh, uh, favoring liberals, is is become somewhat of an ideological church. To brainwash and condition the youth to be more left-wing. This is why socialism is as popular as capitalism. And if you express any dissent, they want to shout you down. They want to sh uh, they want to shame you. They want to socialize you. Like, and this is the same thing that's going on in the black community. This is why I speak out against uh, a lot against censorship. In the black community, there's a social pressure to be the, to be a Democrat. A social pressure to walk a line. If you stick out like a sore thumb in the black community, they come quick to. The, the denounce you call you names uh make fun of you because you express something differently than them if you talk standardized english they'll make fun of you and saying you're trying to be white censorship comes in many forms in in different levels but the inability for allowing people to s express themselves 
express themselves only leads to dogmatic thinking. This is why I know the black community is in a dogmatic thinking. They're in an ideological echo chamber. Because minute a black person express an idea that the majority of black people or the perceived majority don't like, they quick to shout you down as, oh, you're not really black. Oh, oh, we're tired of black faces not speaking in black voices. What the hell that means? You don't you don't speak along democratic lines. Even though I can show you proof Republican policies is better for the black community. The fact that I spoke out against the majority, which is 90% Democrat in the black community. I'm Uncle Tonks Coon Sella blah, blah, blah. Make it make sense. If a group of people all think the same about a topic, can you really claim the people are thinking? No, you cannot. It shows that's that's dogma. And I'm just here to expose it. But hey, you know, I digress. What do you think about RFK's comments? Do you think Biden's the biggest threat to democracy over Trump? And what do you think about the mainstream media always trying to make it about Trump when in reality Biden's in power? Biden's the one doing all this. Why they can't just stick to criticizing Biden? Why do why do you think that media always have to run cover for the Democrats? I have my theories. I want to hear yours in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.